The Savoy Hotel is a luxury hotel located in the Strand in the city of Westminster in central London, England. Built by the impresario Richard Doyley Cart with profits from his Gilbert and Sullivan Opera Productions, it opened on 6 August 1889. It was the first in the Savoy group of hotels and restaurants owned by Cart's family for over a century. The Savoy was the first luxury hotel in Britain, introducing electric lights throughout the building, electric lifts, bathrooms in most of the lavishly furnished rooms, constant hot and cold running water and many other innovations. Cart hired César Ritz as manager and Auguste Escoffier as chef de cuisine. They established an unprecedented standard of quality in hotel service, entertainment and elegant dining, attracting royalty and other rich and powerful guests and diners. The hotel became Cart's most successful venture. Its bands, Savoy Orpheans and the Savoy Havana Band, became famous, and other entertainers who were also often guests included George Gershwin, Frank Sinatra, Lena Horne and Noel Coward. Other famous guests have included Edward VII, Oscar Wilde, Enrico Caruso, Charlie Chaplin, Babe Ruth, Harry Truman, Joan Crawford, Judy Garland, John Wayne, Laurence Olivier, Marilyn Monroe, Humphrey Bogart, Elizabeth Taylor, Barbara Streisand, Bob Dylan, Bette Midler, The Beatles, and many others. Winston Churchill often took his cabinet to lunch at the hotel. The hotel is now managed by Fairmont Hotels and Resorts. It has been called London's most famous hotel. It has 268 rooms and panoramic views of the River Thames across Savoy Place and the Thames Embankment. The hotel is a Grade II listed building. History Site The House of Savoy was the ruling family of Savoy, descended from Humbert I, Count of Sabadia or Morien, who became Count in 1032. The name Sabadia evolved into Savoy or Savoy. Count Peter or Piers or Piero of Savoy d. 1268 was the maternal uncle of Eleanor of Provence, Queen Consort of Henry III of England, and came with her to London. King Henry III made Peter Earl of Richmond and, in 1246, gave him the land between the Strand and the River Thames, where Peter built the Savoy Palace in 1263. Peter gifted the palace and the manor of the Savoy to the Congregation of Canons of the Great St. Bernard, and the palace became the Great Hospital of St. Bernard de Monte Jovis in Savoy. The manor was subsequently purchased by Queen Eleanor, who gave the site to her second son, Edmund, Earl of Lancaster. Edmund's great-granddaughter, Blanche, inherited the site. Her husband, John of Gaunt, 1st Duke of Lancaster, built a magnificent palace that was burned down by Wat Tyler's followers in the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. King Richard II was still a child, and his uncle John of Gaunt was the power behind the throne, and so a main target of the rebels. In about 1505, Henry VII planned a great hospital for poor, netty people, leaving money and instructions for it in his will. The hospital was built in the palace ruins and licensed in 1512. Drawings show that it was a magnificent building, with a dormitory, dining hall and three chapels. Henry VII's hospital lasted for two centuries, but suffered from poor management. The 16th-century historian Stowe noted that the hospital was being misused by loiterers, vagabonds and strumpets. In 1702, the hospital was dissolved, and the hospital buildings were used for other purposes. Part of the old palace was used as a military prison in the 18th century. In the 19th century, the old hospital buildings were demolished, and new buildings were erected. In 1864, a fire burned everything except the stone walls and the Savoy Chapel, and the property sat empty until the impresario Richard Doyley Cart bought it in 1880, to build the Savoy Theatre specifically for the production of the Gilbert and Sullivan operas, of which he was the producer. Early years Having seen the opulence of American hotels during his many visits to the United States, Cart decided to build the first luxury hotel in Britain, to attract a foreign clientele as well as British visitors to London. Opened in 1889, the hotel was designed by architect Thomas Edward Colquitt, who also designed the Wigmore Hall. Cart chose the name, Savoy, to commemorate the history of the property. 
His investors in the venture were, in addition to his relatives, Carl Rosa, George Grossmith, François Sellier, George Edwardus, Augustus Harris and Fanny Ronalds. His friend, the composer Sir Arthur Sullivan, was a shareholder and sat on the board of directors. The hotel was built on a plot of land, next to the Savoy Theatre, that Cart originally purchased to house an electrical generator for the theatre built in 1881, which was the first public building in the world to be lit entirely by electricity. The construction of the hotel took five years and was financed by the profits from the Gilbert and Sullivan partnership, particularly from the Mikado. It was the first hotel in Britain lit by electric lights and the first with electric lifts. Other innovations included private, marble, en-suite bathrooms in the majority of its 268 rooms, constant hot and cold running water in each room, glazed brickwork designed to prevent London's smoke-laden air from spoiling the external walls, and its own artesian well. At first the Savoy did well, but within six months of opening, the hotel was losing money. The board of directors instructed Cart to replace the management team, headed by W. Hardwick as manager and M. Charpentier as chef de cuisine. As manager he engaged César Ritz, later the founder of the Ritz Hotel. Ritz brought in the chef Auguste Escoffier and the maitre de hotel Louis Echenard and put together what he described as, "...a little army of hotel men for the conquest of London." Escoffier recruited French cooks and reorganized the kitchens. The Savoy under Ritz and his partners soon attracted distinguished and wealthy clientele, headed by the Prince of Wales. Aristocratic women, hitherto unaccustomed to dining in public, were now seen in full regalia in the Savoy dining and supper rooms. The hotel became such a financial success that Cart bought other luxury hotels. At the same time, Ritz continued to manage his own hotels and businesses in Europe. Nellie Melba, among others, noted that Ritz was less focused on the Savoy. In 1897, Ritz and his partners were dismissed from the Savoy. Ritz and Eschenard were implicated in the disappearance of over £3,400 equivalent to £350,000 at 2016, of wine and spirits, and Escoffier had been receiving gifts from the Savoy's suppliers. In a 1938 biography of her husband, Ritz's widow maintained that he resigned and that Escoffier, Eschenard, and other senior employees resigned with him. This fiction was perpetuated for many years, with the consent of the Savoy Company. In fact, however, after a damning report by the company's auditors and the advice of the prominent lawyer, Sir Edward Carson, that it was the board's imperative duty to dismiss the manager and the chef, Cart handed Ritz, Escoffier and Eschenard letters of dismissal. By a resolution passed this morning you have been dismissed from the service of the hotel for, among other serious reasons, gross negligence and breaches of duty and mismanagement. I am also directed to request that you will be good enough to leave the hotel at once. Ritz threatened to sue the hotel company for wrongful dismissal, but was evidently dissuaded by Escoffier, who felt that their interests would be better served by keeping the scandal quiet. It was not until 1985 that the facts became public knowledge. The Savoy Group purchased Simpsons in the Strand in 1898. The next year, Cart engaged M. Joseph, proprietor of the Marivaux restaurant in Paris, as his new maitre de hotel and in 1900, appointed George Reeves Smith as the next managing director of the Savoy Hotel Group. Reeves Smith served in this capacity until 1941. After Richard Doyley Cart died in 1901, his son Rupert Doyley Cart became chairman of the Savoy Hotel Group in 1903 and supervised the expansion of the hotel and the modernization of the other hotels in the group's ownership, such as Claridge's. The expansion of the hotel in 1903-04 included new east and west wings, and moving the main entrance to Savoy Court off the Strand. The additions pioneered the use of steel frame construction in London. At that time, the hotel added Britain's first serviced apartments, with access to all the hotel's amenities. Many famous figures became residents, such as Sarah Bernhardt and Sir Thomas Dewar, some of whom lived there for decades. Spectacular parties were held at the hotel. For example, in 1905 the American millionaire George A. Kessler hosted a gondola party, where the central courtyard was flooded to a depth of four feet, and scenery was erected around the walls. Costumed staff and guests recreated Venice. The two dozen guests dined in an enormous gondola. After dinner, Enrico Caruso sang, and a baby elephant brought in a five foot birthday cake. When the hotel was expanded, Rupert Doyley Cart decided to develop a luxurious, handcrafted bed unique to the Savoy and his other hotels. 
His Savoy bed, also called the number two bed, was covered in a ticking whose design is attributed to his stepmother, Helen Cart. In 1924, the hotel bought James Edwards Limited, the manufacturer of the bed. Later, the Savoy Group sold the company, which became Savoy Beds in 1997. Savoy Beds continues to make the Savoy bed for the hotel. Topic. 1913 to World War II After the death of Helen Cart in 1913, Rupert Doily Cart became the controlling stockholder of the hotel group. In 1919, he sold the Grand Hotel, Rome, which his father had acquired in 1894 at the urging of Ritz. For the Savoy, he hired a new chef, François Latry, who served from 1919 to 1942. In the 1920s he ensured that the Savoy continued to attract a fashionable clientele by a continuous program of modernization and the introduction of dancing in the large restaurants. It also became the first hotel with air conditioning, steam heating and soundproofed windows in the rooms, 24-hour room service and telephones in every bathroom. It also manufactured its own mattresses. One famous incident during Rupert's early years was the 1923 shooting, at the hotel, of a wealthy young Egyptian, Prince Fami Bey, by his French wife, Marguerite. The widow was acquitted of murder after it was revealed that her husband had treated her with extreme cruelty throughout the six-month marriage and had stated that he was going to kill her. Until the 1930s, the Savoy Group had not thought it necessary to advertise, but Cart and Reeves Smith changed their approach. We are endeavoring by intensive propaganda work to get more customers. This work is going on in the USA, in Canada, in the Argentine and in Europe. In 1938 Hugh Wantner joined the Savoy Hotel Group as Reeves Smith's assistant, and he became managing director in 1941. During World War II, Wantner and his staff had to cope with bomb damage, food rationing, manpower shortage and a serious decline in the number of foreign visitors. After the U.S. entered the war, business picked up as the Savoy Hotel became a favorite of American officers, diplomats, journalists and others. The hotel became a meeting place for war leaders. Winston Churchill often took his cabinet to lunch at the hotel. Lord Mountbatten, Charles de Gaulle, Jan Masaryk and General Wavell were among the regular grill room diners, and the hotel's air raid shelters were the smartest in London. Wantner cooperated fully with the government's wartime restrictions, helping to draw up an order imposing a five-shilling limit on the price of a restaurant meal. Topic: 1946 to 2007. After World War II, the Savoy Group experienced a strike of its employees in support of a waiter dismissed from the hotel. The matter was judged so serious that the government set up a court of inquiry. Nevertheless, the hotel continued to attract celebrities. In 1946, Wantner set up the Savoy Management Scheme, a school to train hoteliers, that was maintained for half a century. The last major appointments of Rupert Doyley Cart's chairmanship were Willie Adolph Hofflin, general manager from 1941 to 1960, and Auguste Laplanche, head chef from 1946 to 1965. When Cart died in 1948, his daughter Bridget did not wish to become chairman, accepting instead the vice chairman position, and the Savoy board elected Wantner, the first person to combine the roles of chairman and managing director since the Savoy's founder, Richard Doyley Cart. Wantner remained managing director until 1979 and chairman until 1984, and he was president thereafter until 1992. To mark Queen Elizabeth II's coronation on 2 June 1953, the hotel hosted the Savoy Coronation Ball, attended by 1,400 people, including Hollywood stars, royalty and other notables, who paid 12 guineas equivalent to £323 as of 2016, each. Sixteen yeoman warders from the Tower of London lined the entrance staircase. The interior of the Savoy was decked in hundreds of yards of dove grey material and heraldic banners in scarlet, blue and yellow. The design was supervised by Bridget Doily Cart, whose fellow organisers included Cecil Beaton and Ninette de Valois. The cabaret was under the direction of Laurence Olivier, Noel Coward and John Mills. Under Wantner's leadership, the Savoy appointed its first British head chef, Silvino Trompetto, who was maitre chef from 1965 to 1980. 
Giles Shepard (1937–2006) succeeded Wantner as managing director from 1979 to 1994 and helped to defend the Savoy Group against Charles Forte's attempt to take control of the board in the 1980s. Forte gained a majority of the shares, but was unable to take control due to the company's ownership structure. Shepard also introduced competitive salaries for the staff, increased international marketing of the hotel, and led the Savoy's centenary celebrations. Ramon Pajares was managing director from 1994 to 1999. The Savoy continued to be a popular meeting place. La Tout London was there it seemed, from film stars to businessmen to politicians, all staying or being entertained at the Grand Old Fun Palace on the Strand. Bridget Doily Cart died childless in 1985, bringing an end to her family line. In 1998, an American private equity house, the Blackstone Group, purchased the Savoy Hotel Group. They sold it in 2004 to Quinlan Private, who sold the Savoy Hotel and Restaurant Simpsons in the Strand eight months later, for an estimated £250 million, to Al Walid bin Talal to be managed by Al Walid's affiliate, Fairmont Hotels and Resorts of Canada. Quinlan's group retained the rest of the hotels under the name Maybourne Hotel Group. Topic 2010 refurbishment to present. In December 2007, the hotel closed for a complete renovation, the cost of which was budgeted at 100 million pounds. The hotel conducted a sale of 3,000 pieces of its famous furnishings and memorabilia. The projected reopening date was delayed more than a year to October 2010, as structural and system problems held up construction. The building's façade required extensive stabilization, and the cost of the renovations grew to £220 million. The new energy-efficient design reduced the hotel's electricity usage by approximately 50% and reuse and recycling increased. The new design features a Thames foyer with a winter garden gazebo under a stained glass cupola with natural light, which is the venue for late-night dining and the hotel's famous afternoon tea. The glass dome had been covered since World War II. A new tea shop and patisserie is called Savoy Tea, and a glass enclosed fitness gallery with rooftop swimming pool, gym, and spa are located above the Savoy Theatre. The new Beaufort Bar has an Art Deco interior of jet black and gold and offers nightly cabaret. The River Restaurant, now renamed Caspars, facing the Thames, is also decorated in the Art Deco style, but the American bar is nearly unchanged. The rooms are decorated in period styles harmonized with the adjacent hallways, and they retain built-in wardrobes and bedroom cabinets. The décor is Edwardian on the Thames River side and Art Deco on the Strand side. Butler service was also reintroduced to the hotel. Gordon Ramsay manages the Savoy Grill with Stuart Gillies as chef director and Andy Cook as head chef. In a nod to the hotel's origins, six private dining rooms are named after Gilbert and Sullivan operas. The hotel contains a small museum next to the American Bar, open to the public, with a revolving exhibition of items from the hotel's archives. A motor launch is available to take small parties from the Savoy Pier in front of the hotel for Champagne River tours. The critic for the Daily Telegraph wrote, The Savoy is still the Savoy, only better. The rooms are calm. You are the personality, not the room. The hotel is a savior of the Strand I suspect now. The lobby is bigger and grander, and just the same." A review in The Guardian noted that reception, "...now is sheer sleight of hand. In under five minutes I have been expertly drawn into the world of Savoy, furniture and furnishings conspire to enhance my stay." While the same reviewer found the spa disappointing, she gave highest marks to the hotel's personalized service, the Savoy Tea, afternoon tea in the Thames foyer, and the Beaufort Bar, concluding, The Savoy is back where it belongs, right on top. The Savoy Grill, however, lost its Michelin star and reopened to mixed reviews. Three years after the reopening, the owners announced that business had been disappointing, and the hotel was in jeopardy of closing. The hotel celebrated its 125th anniversary in 2014, at which time it received a glowing review from the London Evening Standard. Notable guests Numerous notable guests have stayed at the hotel.
Claude Monet and James Whistler both stayed at the hotel and painted or drew views, from their rooms, of the River Thames. The Savoy featured prominently in guest Oscar Wilde's trial for gross indecency. Other celebrity guests in the hotel's early decades included the future King Edward VII, Sarah Bernhardt, Enrico Caruso, Lily Langtry, H. G. Wells, George Bernard Shaw, Nellie Melba, Charlie Chaplin, Al Jolson, Errol Flynn, Fred Astaire, Marlene Dietrich, Lionel Barrymore, Harry Truman, Audrey Hepburn, Judy Garland, Josephine Baker, Cary Grant, Babe Ruth, Ivor Novello and Noel Coward. The hotel kept records of its guests' preferences, so that it could provide for them in advance. For Coward, the staff made history by taking the first photographs of a hotel guest's toilet articles so that they could lay them out in his bathroom exactly as he liked them. They made sure to provide a fireproof eiderdown quilt to Barrymore, as he always smoked while reading in bed. Bob Dylan stayed in the hotel in 1965 and filmed the video clip, Subterranean Homesick Blues, in an adjacent alley. Lawrence Olivier and Vivian Lee met at the hotel. Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe, John Wayne, Louis Armstrong, Humphrey Bogart, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Maria Callas, Coco Chanel, Christian Dior, Sophia Loren, Julie Andrews, Lena Horne, Marlon Brando, Jane Fonda, Barbara Streisand, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Elton John, U2, Led Zeppelin, The Who, George Clooney, Whoopi Goldberg and Stephen Fry are just a few of the celebrities who stayed there in recent decades. Richard Harris lived at the hotel for the last several years of his life. While being carried out on a stretcher before he died, he joked, it was the food. The arts Topic Music and fine art The Savoy Hotel has long been associated with the arts. Monet served as the hotel's first artist in residence in 1901, and that program continues. George Gershwin gave the British premiere of Rhapsody in Blue at the hotel in 1925, simultaneously broadcast by the BBC. The hotel's dance bands of the interwar years, the Savoy Orpheans and the Savoy Havana Band, were described as probably the best known bands in Europe and broadcast regularly from the hotel. In 2013, the hotel reintroduced its dinner dances, with resident dance band Alex Mendham and his orchestra playing music from the 1920s and 30s. Earlywine, Stephen Thomas. Rupert Doyley Cart engaged Richard Collett to run the cabaret at the Savoy, which opened in April 1929. Lena Horne and others made their British debuts there. Frank Sinatra played the piano and sang there. In 2012, Stuart McAlpine Miller, as artist in residence, painted eight works inspired by celebrity guests of the hotel. The same year, another British artist, David Downes, created a large scale drawing, delighting guests by working in the lobby of the Savoy. Downes based his work on a drawing of the Thames in the Savoy's collection. The piece, displayed in the hotel's front hall, depicts the Thames Diamond Jubilee pageant. In 2013, South African artist Johnny Hurwitz created a chrome and resin anamorphic sculpture of Caspar, the hotel's cat mascot, titled The Fourteenth Guest, found at the entrance to the hotel's newest restaurant, Caspar's Seafood Bar and Grill. Caspar's story begins with the legend of an 1898 dinner at the Savoy given for 14 guests by Wolf Joel, a South African diamond tycoon. One of the diners was unable to attend, leaving the number of guests an unlucky 13, and another diner predicted that whoever first left the table would soon die. The first to leave was Joel, who was shot dead a few weeks later in Johannesburg. After this, the hotel offered to seat a member of its staff at tables of 13 to ward off bad luck. Finally, in 1926, the designer Basil Ionides sculpted a three-foot-high Art Deco black cat called Caspar, which is used as the 14th guest. Caspar is given a full place setting, a napkin is tied around his neck, and he is served each course. Winston Churchill liked Ionides's Caspar so much that he insisted that the sculpture join his parties of any size when dining at the Savoy. In films and novels The hotel has often been used as a film location. For example, the romantic finale to The Notting Hill 1999 is set in the hotel's Lancaster Room, where Anna Julia Roberts and William Hugh Grant declare their mutual love. In 1921, the hotel was used in the film Kips, based on the novel by H. G. Wells. It also featured in The French Lieutenant's Woman 1981 and Entrapment 1999, among others. 
In 2011, the hotel was used as the setting for Duran Duran's music video for their song, Girl Panic. From their album All You Need Is Now, Arnold Bennett wrote the novel Imperial Palace in 1930, based on his research at the hotel. The novel fictionalizes the hotel's operations. Michael Morpurgo wrote a children's book fictionalizing the hotel's mascot, Caspar, as an adventurer, Caspar, Prince of Cats 2008, which was released in the U.S. as Caspar, the Titanic Cat 2012. <laughs> Restaurants and bars Topic restaurants The hotel has two well-known restaurants, the Grill Room usually known as the Savoy Grill, on the north side of the building, with its entrance off the Strand, and the Savoy Restaurant formerly known as the River Restaurant, now named Caspars, on the south side, overlooking the River Thames. The latter has long been famous for its inventive chefs, beginning in 1890, with the celebrity chef Auguste Escoffier. Escoffier created many famous dishes at the Savoy. In 1893, he invented the Pesh Melba in honor of the Australian singer Nellie Melba, and in 1897, Melba Toast. Other Escoffier creations were Bomb Narrow, a flaming ice, phrases a la Sarah Bernhardt, strawberries with pineapple and curacao sorbet, Bazers de Vierge, meringue with vanilla cream and crystallized white rose and violet petals, and Supremes de Volailles Jeanette, jellied chicken breasts with foie gras. Another signature dish is the omelette Arnold Bennett. Under Ritz and Escoffier, evening dress was required in the restaurant, and Ritz was innovative in hiring popular musicians to play background music during dinner and in printing daily menus. Even today, elegant dining at the Savoy includes formal afternoon tea with choral and other performances at Christmas time. The Savoy has a Sunday brunch, which includes free flow champagne, and special events, such as New Year's Eve dinner. Auguste Laplanche was head chef at the hotel from 1946 to 1965, Silvino Trompetto was maitre chef from 1965 to 1980, and Anton Edelman was maitre chef des cuisines for 21 years, from 1982 to 2003. As part of the 2010 refurbishment, the restaurant was completely redecorated in the Art Deco style, with a leopard print carpet. In 2013, the restaurant became Caspar's Seafood Bar and Grill. The menu features oysters, cured and smoked fish. The interior design follows the hotel's 1920s style and its black and green livery, and the room offers views of the Thames and some of London's landmarks. The restaurant is open all day, seven days a week. Reviews for the restaurant have improved since the reopening. The smoked and cured fish here is to die for, and a whole roast sea bream for two was simply brilliant, since Gordon Ramsay employed his former protege Marcus Waring in the less formal Savoy Grill, the restaurant earned its first Michelin star. The grill was originally where people go to eat a modest luncheon or to dine on the way to the theatre without spending too much time or too much money. Since 2010, the chef patron has been Stuart Gillies. From 2015 to 2017, Kim Woodward, a former contestant on the TV show MasterChef, The Professionals, became the grill's first female head chef. The Thames foyer serves breakfast, morning coffee, light lunch and supper, as well as afternoon tea, accompanied by the hotel's resident pianist. Also part of the hotel buildings is Simpsons in the Strand, featuring classic British-style cuisine. Its specialties are aged Scottish beef on the bone, potted shrimps, roast saddle of lamb and steak and kidney pie. Topic: <inaudible> Bars. The American Bar at the Savoy Hotel was one of the earliest establishments to introduce American-style cocktails to Europe. The term American Bar was used in London to designate the sale of American cocktails from the late 19th century. The head barmen, in chronological order, have been as follows Frank Wells, 1893-1902 Ada. Coley. Coleman, 1903-1924. She concocted the Hanky Panky cocktail for Sir Charles Hawtrey. Harry Craddock, 1925-1938 Born in England, Craddock trained as a barman in the U.S. but fled 1920s prohibition to head the Savoy's bars, author of the Savoy Cocktail Book and reputed inventor of such cocktails as the White Lady. Eddie Clark, 1939-1942. During the Second World War, he created a cocktail for each branch of the armed services, Eight Bells, for the Navy, New Contemptible, for the Army, and Wings, 
for the RAF. Reginald Johnny Johnson, 1942 to 1954. He invented wedding bells for the wedding of Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Joe Gilmore, 1954 to 1975. Among his many creations was the moonwalk to honor Neil Armstrong's achievement. His hangover cure was two aspirins and a corpse reviver. Harry Vick Vickers, 1975 to 1981. His cocktails included Speedbird, one of three drinks created for the first commercial flight of the Concorde in 1976. Victor Gower, 1981 to 1985. Peter Dorelli, 1985 to 2003. His 1889er celebrated the hotel's centenary in 1989, and together with Salim Kauri, he created the Millennium to celebrate the end of the 20th century. Salim Kauri, 2003 to 2010. In 1992, he won the UK Barman of the Year competition by inventing the Blushing Monarch, inspired by Princess Diana. Eric Lorenz, 2010 to present. He created a version of the El Malacan. Cocktail, the American bar is decorated in a warm Art Deco design, with cream and ochre walls, and electric blue and gold chairs. The walls feature the photos of famous guests. A pianist plays classic American jazz every day on a baby grand piano in the center of the room. The Beaufort Bar is a new bar created in the 2010 renovation, specializing in champagne as well as cocktails. Decorated in an Art Deco design of jet black and gold, it offers a nightly cabaret. The Savoy Cocktail Book In 1930, the Savoy Hotel first published its cocktail book, The Savoy Cocktail Book, with 750 recipes compiled by Harry Craddock of the American Bar and Art Deco Decorations by Gilbert Rumbold. The book has remained in print since then and was subsequently republished in 1952, 1965, 1985, 1996, and expanded in 1999 and 2014. Topic: <laughs> Savoy Court. Savoy Court is the only named street in the United Kingdom where vehicles are required to drive on the right. This is said to date from the days of the Hackney carriage when a cab driver would reach his arm out of the driver's door window to open the passenger's door which opened backwards and had the handle at the front, without having to get out of the cab himself. Additionally, the hotel entrance's small roundabout meant that vehicles needed a turning circle of 25 feet meters to navigate it. This is still the legally required turning circle for all London cabs. <laughs> Notes <laughs>